السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه واتبع هداه وبعد Is the Quran relevant to us today? Do you feel that there is a distance between you and the Quran? Maybe because the Quran was revealed 14 centuries ago and you feel that it doesn't relate to you in this modern world? Do you feel there is a distance between you and the Quran? Maybe because uh, of the language barriers? You do not know the original language? Well, if we want to examine these questions seriously, we can first examine the Quranic self-image. What does the Quran say about itself? How does the Quran view itself? If we go back to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet, telling him about the purpose of the Quran. And from that, we can know if the Quran really relates to us or no. Or how can we deal with it and how we can approach it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet in the Quran, we communicated to you a spirit from us, a spirit. Allah is calling the Quran ruh, a spirit or soul. The point here is, why is the Quran is considered as ruh, as soul or spirit? Because the Quran gives life to your heart. As water gives life to your body, and as breathing gives you life, the Quran also gives life to your heart. And you need to underline this word because this is how you need to approach the Quran with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Istajibu lillahi wa lirrasuli idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. Respond positively to Allah and to His Prophet when, they, when, when you are called to that which gives you life. And in order to, I like images, and the Quran also is, has many images that helps us understand big concepts. So let's rely on Surah An-Nahl and see an image that connects the Quran with water. Because that, from that we can really decide how to approach the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nahl, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا لِتُبَيِّنَ لَهُمُ الَّذِي اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ We revealed or basically we sent down this book unto you only to explain to them that in which they differ. وَهُدَى وَرَحْمَةِ And as a source of guidance and mercy لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ To people who believe. After this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاللَّهُ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً Allah sent down from the sky water, the rain. فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا And He brought life to the earth after its death. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِقَوْمِ يَسْمَعُونَ Indeed, in this there is a sign for those who listen. Meaning, who listen with their hearts. Who listen attentively. So the point here is that as water gives life to the land, so does the Qur'an gives life to the heart. And if you really want to know how to benefit from the Qur'an, you need to really think about this second image of water giving life to the land. And take it seriously. It's not there just haphazardly mentioned after talking about the Qur'an. If you want spiritual nurturing of your heart, you need to examine land farming and how it works, because this is also how the heart would work. So as we learn about land farming, this will help you learn about spiritual farming. What is necessary for farmers in order to have some fruits? If you can identify basic steps in farming, you can really, without exaggeration, apply that as you're approaching the Qur'an to transform your heart. For farmers, they need first to make sure that the land is fertile. Because if it is not, it will never benefit from the seeds, from the water, and it will never give fruits. So it's the same with your heart. 
And I would say, in order to make sure that you have a fertile heart that can benefit from the Quran, you must have at least one prerequisite, which is Sidqul Irada. You must be seeking Allah honestly and seriously. Actually, this is the main thing we can ever do in our way to Allah. The only thing we can do is that seeking of guidance. And we seek it from the bottom of our hearts. When you do and you ask Allah to help you reach that path, Allah will definitely guide you. And this is what we learned from Surah Al-Fatiha. After you learn who Allah is, you get to the point when you say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ we worship you alone and we seek help from you alone. This is how to prepare that heart. You have to have the honest and sincere seeking for the truth. And follow that with a sincere dua. If Allah know good in your heart, Allah will guide you. Remember, we always say Allah is the one who guides. Yes, Allah is the one who guides those who are sincerely seeking Him. This is your test. And this is what you can ever accomplish. You're coming here, it's not your effort. It's Allah guiding you because you had a desire. You had a sincere desire. And you made some plans. And you met some challenges and you overcame them. So this is the first challenge when it comes to farming. The second, farmers usually weed out the field to ensure that there will be no insects. And same thing would apply to this heart. You need to prepare this heart to receive benefits. Again, we're not talking about language here at all. Even if you read it in English. And we'll come to this point. And Sheikh Hamid will also illustrate. So my talk is halfway. So farmers would, would weed out the, uh, the, the, the field. So you need to weed out your heart. Of what? Of arrogance? of any type of insincerity because these are things that blocks guidance from entering into your heart. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said very clearly in the Quran, I'll turn my signs away for those who are behaving arrogantly without any, uh, any reason. So behaving, approaching the Quran arrogantly will never help you. That is why you must develop that, uh, uh, that humble heart. One important thing is, one important thing when it comes to farming is taking your time. Patience is a key when it comes to farming. If you want to have a spiritual farming through the Quran, you really need to be patient. Do not expect transformation to happen like that. Have you ever heard of the Chinese bamboo tree? I want you to search more about that tree because many of us could belong, could have that type of nature. You know what happens when, for the farmers who, who, who grow the Chinese bamboo tree? In the first year, there is no sign of visible growth. In the second year, no sign of visible growth. In the third year, no sign of visible growth. In the fourth year, no sign of visible growth. In, in, in the fourth, no sign. In the fifth, you can see growth. But what type of growth? It's really amazing. That tree would grow 80 feet in six weeks in the fifth year. Some of us may experience this. And now you can easily recognize why is that tree taking all of these years to grow? Because it has to build a strong, deep root system that can support the potential growth that would happen in the fifth year. If you do not see that growth today, be patient. All of these intake of the Quran that, or, or these lectures that you're exposing the Quran to could be these years that is building a strong root system that could flourish in the fifth year 
or in whatever year. So be patient. And this is a side note. This also, the bamboo tree would help us in raising our kids. Sometimes we raise our kids for selfish reasons and we give up on them. You know why we give up on them? Because we're not looking for the fruit. We're selfish. We want to see the fruit today. But if you really are raising them in the right way, you want the, the change to happen, whether you can see it or not. Of course, we all love to see the change and we all love to see the fruits. But I care about the fruits, whether I see or not, whether it comes in the first year or in the fifth year. Some of us want our kids to be perfect, to show off in front of others. And let's be serious. This is between you and Allah. And that is why we give up on them. Never give up on your kids. Because if you do, no one will believe in them. If everyone gave up on them, you should be the only one who believes in them. And maybe they will grow one day, even after they die. Be sincere, keep praying for them, do not give up. One of the things farmers do, one of the things farmers do when it comes to uh, ensuring fruits, is that the water is really meant for the land. The water is really meant for the land. And if you want to benefit from the Quran, you should deal with the Qur'an in this personal way. The Qur'an is meant to address you. The Qur'an is meant to change you and to transform you. Do not read the stories as if it is talking about different characters that doesn't relate to you. The story of Adam and Iblis, is it a myth? Uh, how can I relate to these stories? You do. And let me give you an example. From the story of Adam and Iblis, if I asked you, what is the first dua recorded in the Quran? The first dua ever uttered by a human being. You know what this dua is? رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُنَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh Allah, we wronged ourselves. And if you do not forgive us and show mercy on us, we'll be among those who are khasirin, those who suffered a big loss. And you know what is second dua? It's Iblis. Give me time till the day when they are resurrected. And Allah said, you're granted that time. What do you see here is something that relates to me and you. All of the stories of the prophets are talking about two groups. Good group and bad group. And eventually the good group are victorious. But the story of Adam talks about me and you. Talks about two paths. When we commit a mistake, do we acknowledge the mistake and claim responsibility for what we did and promise to fix the damage we caused? If you do, you're following the way of Adam. Or are we too arrogant to accept the truth and, 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 and do not care about the consequences at all? That is the way of the shaitan. Can anyone claim now that the Quran does not relate to me and you? This is really very basic when it comes to our behavior. What happens when you do something wrong to your wife or something wrong to your husband? Do you ever feel that you did something wrong, but you're too arrogant to admit it? Now, you must know that you're following the way of the shaitan. This is exactly how the Quran is talking to me and presenting the story to me. Are you following the way of Adam? And it is interesting that the word the word human in Arabic is Adami. Adami, one who belongs to Adam. Do you belong to Adam now in that attitude? Or you seek justifications for your actions? That is why, subhanAllah, Allah in the Quran mentioned a lot of points that Adam could have used as justifications, but Adam didn't. Allah said in the Quran, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ The shaitan whispered to them. Adam did not say, Oh Allah, the shaitan whispered to me, it's not actually my fault. And وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لِمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ The shaitan made an oath by Allah that I am really a sincere advisor. Adam did not use that justification. Adam did not say, Ya Allah, you said about the shaitan, فَدَلَّهُمَا بِغُرُورِ He deceived them. Adam admitted the mistake, claimed responsibility, 
was determined to fix the damage that it was caused. This is how the Quran relates to me. It's not about Arabic. It's about meditating on the message delivered to me and to you. Do not separate you from the text. Put yourself in the ayat. Put yourself in the ayah. And you have now two choices, the way of Adam or the way of the shaitan. Let me give you another example of how it is important to think that this water is actually for you. Because the Quran is like that water. Let me give, have you ever went through some pain and no one can really give you any words of comfort? You can read the Quran and find comfort. Let me give you an, a, a surah. We, all of us would read it, but if you read it personally, if you read it as if it addresses you, it will be a great, you will be in tears. And that tears will be tears of joy, maybe. Imagine this. The Prophet is feeling a lot of pain. He's feeling that the da'wah is big burden on him. People are rejecting him. And he's sincere, no fruits, 13 years, no hope. And he's like any human being, he feels sad. Many ayat in the Quran are dedicated to tell the Prophet, فَلَا تَذْهَبْ نَفْسُكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَسَرَاتِ Do not grieve to death because of them. Yes, uh, the Quran can be a great source to relieve your sufferings. Let me give you this example of Surah, uh, of surah uh, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صدرك. I read it roughly in English and see because we do not put ourselves in the text, it doesn't relate to us. The surah goes like this. Haven't we expanded your chest for you and removed all burden from your shoulder that is about to break your back and we gave you good reputation in this life? Remember with every difficulty comes Eve. With every difficulty comes ease. And then the surah ended with two more ayat saying, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you're done, stand up in prayer. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And be, devo and be devoutly dedicated to your Lord. I can put myself in this ayah, in this surah, because it has three main parts. First, it reminds me of Allah's blessings on me. Maybe these blessings are not yours now. But you have a lot of blessings. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Alam nu'atika sihha tayyibah. Haven't we given you a good health? Haven't we given you good parents? Haven't we given you good teachers? Haven't we given you this? Now make your list of the good de of the of the good blessings that Allah gave you. And then the second step. Remember, with life comes with 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 difficulty comes ease. Remember, embrace the nature of life. Life is difficult. Embrace it. Do not rebel against it. It is a mixture of good and bad. Acknowledge what life is all about. Again, this is not about Arabic. This is not about 14 centuries ago. This is about me. Reminding me of Allah's blessings on me. And second, reminding me of the nature of life itself. As Ibn Ata'illah said, لا تستغرب قوع الأكدار ما دمت في هذه الدار. فإنها ما أظهرت إلا ما هو واجب وصفها ومستحق نعتها. Do not be one minute. Okay. Do not be surprised by the troubles uh, of this life, because it just showed what it is about. Uh, take the example, and I'll finish with this quickly. Take the example of, uh, or, or that would be enough actually for uh, to give time for Sheikh uh, Hamid. So again, put yourself in the text. Land farming could help you really have spiritual nurturing through the Quran. Wa jazakumullahu khayran ajma'in. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.